I've got with me Api Tenza. This is a nice little find that I found at work. Randomly stumbled into another artist. And Api, introduce yourself and what it is that you do. Yeah, well, hi, I'm Api. And I met Marcel when I was actually listening. <laughs> I was in. I was listening to my own song, and he was like, "What are you? With? What's got you so in a trance?" And then we continued conversation. Here we are. But I'm a Pitenza, and I'm a South African musician based in New York. And yeah, I make music. Nice, nice, nice little summary there. And like, I, I'm. I was obviously I was so curious at the time of meeting you about just what it is you've been doing over in in New York and whatnot. And you said at that time that you had started making music in, I believe it was 2019. Yeah, I started making music when I moved to New York in 2019 because, yeah, I moved after high school, 2019. I took a gap year and I just didn't really know what I wanted to do. And at that point, I think I was just kind of battling what people want you to do and what you want to do. So I was doing what people wanted me to do at the time. So I moved to, but I was like, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to do it in New York. So I moved to New York by myself, a 19-year-old, and I had the best time. I was also there with a friend that I went to high school with, luckily, and we would spend every day together. And I kind of just, you know, started getting inspired. And then I started getting into music. And then turns out I actually loved to do it because I used to write poetry in high school growing up. I just started, I thought, what if I just put a beat over this? And that's what I did. And then I just couldn't stop after that. And then pandemic came and then I moved home for a little while which is where I started making a lot of music on SoundCloud like if you go on my SoundCloud you'll see it starts like from when the pandemic hit and I made a song called Bored like it was about being bored in the house and then after that I just like kind of experimented more with my sound and yeah I moved back to New York two years ago and ever since then I've just yeah I've been doing music the whole time and and I'm, yeah, I joined a band when I moved to New York. I joined a girl group and we released a song called Julia Fox, which Julia Fox actually like, she, what's it? When you reblog something on TikTok. But she reposted it or did she like, did she stitch it or like duet it? So it was like her next to the song. Yeah, it was her and her baby dancing to the song. <laughs> That's fucking cool, <laughs> dude. What? <laughs> yeah. And after that, the song really kind of picked up and it's sitting at like a hundred and something K on Spotify, like stream on Spotify right now. And that song was actually a very personal song for me because I wrote it at a time where my sister just passed away. And I was very like, like writings, like, I guess like, a, you know, like therapy for me. And at that time, I just joined the band too. And I was supposed to write like a, like, you know, when you write a funeral speech, I was supposed to write one for my sister, but then I took a little break because I was like, this is overwhelming. And then I just like did something else because my friend sent me a beat and I was like, why not just, and I just wrote the part on Julia Fox and I was like, and getting money is my expertise with extra ease. I'm making all this extra cheese. And even in that part, you said you, like I say, um, I want extra seats for my niece, who's my niece, who's my sister's daughter. And yeah, it's like a personal song turned into like a, like the really good hip hop, like kind of sound. And yeah, in my writing, I get really like personal because I guess what else do you, does one have to write about? It's like my artistic like journey with writing. I have to really be feeling some type, like some type of way when I write. <clears throat> Not that it's going to be a hundred percent like directed at something, but I draw inspiration from my own life. Like when I write. It's open to interpretation. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because you know what you're talking about a fee, you know, you're writing about a feeling, not this is like, and a feeling can be perceived in so many different ways. Yeah, yeah, I, I fully understand. Yeah, it speaks to people differently. It's like universal. Yeah, I appreciate that about like writing and music because someone will hear something like it's interesting when people go, like, my favorite song of yours is this song, but you have your own personal song, like, favorite song of yours. And people close to you, you know, what their favorite song of yours is. And it's just interesting, like, to see what type of song favor like yeah. when you said yours was Guam <laughs> yeah like I I just I, I had a, one hell of a fun time with it it's it's a fun song it's got a lot of energy and like what it do is also yeah. like please don't misunderstand like I'm not trying to detract from any other songs <laughs> but other ones that I listened to that was sick I didn't know that you had so much other content on SoundCloud I was browsing through it now like while you were talking about it and I was like oh shit okay I don't think I ever utilized SoundCloud this much I probably should have as a as a teenager that's when we all start SoundCloud I guess like every like 
if you hear like like you know like a writer's come up story i think a lot of people utilize soundcloud as like a music diary that's how i did i was like music that i'm not going to put out but i want to have it like on you know standby for me cataloged or um what's the word archived exactly yeah there's a reason soundcloud has become that kind of like a meme because you just like you're right you're 100% right of it being like a, a rite of passage every artist i'm sure like every artist who has started out and has wanted to release in some form of way the vast majority of artists can't afford even the basic like packages and stuff to get stuff onto spotify other platforms and stuff like that you, you'll end up just using soundcloud i was thinking about it today that the journey of it is actually the what's like so like it makes it more you have more to say more to write so you make like more better art it's like even steve lacy he's huge now but he started making music on his own on his like ipod but that's like what kind of just makes him who he is today like uh, me like starting on soundcloud starting on garage band on my own like like one day that's the story that that's just like what makes an artist like their their reasoning behind wanting to do this and like doing it again like even if you don't have the equipment or doing it even if your parents are like no be a doctor there's a band from cape town called the medicine dolls like they are the like one of the highest definitions of do whatever the fuck you can with what you got and i think the vocalist had this brainwave they couldn't afford to go into studio at the time and he had this like idea of hey my camera has a mic he somehow managed to like record and produce like something that if you had to listen to it you would not think was produced with a camera microphone it was stupid like I, when he told me the story of how he'd done it i was like no dude that's not even fuck like how is that possible it's crazy what people can do like from right experiment even guap i made like i made i remember it was like me at my dad's house i had i didn't really have a mic but i had this little jbl speaker and I used it as a mic. And on GarageBand, there was kind of a delay, but I like I just really worked on that track. And then at the end of the day, it's like one of my like I'd say personal like best songs. And I'm like, I, I didn't record that in a studio. <laughs> wait, so you wait, wait, wait. So to clarify, you made that in with GarageBand <laughs> and using a JBL speaker as a microphone. Literally, I didn't record that in a studio. It was in my room. That is mad impressive. Like I'm actually I'm shocked. Because now, what you're talking about is is called latency. As a guitar player, when I experience latency, I get unreasonably angry. And the fact that you just made it work is mind blowing to me. <laughs> I guess it's like it's funny. It's like an OCD thing where it's like I have a song I'll make, and then I'll have it so stuck in my head that I have no choice but to make it myself. Like, and then I'll just like really work on it. But it's like hard because you also it's hard to do that because you kind of. Is it perfect? Is it how it should be? But I've stopped like I've stopped put being too hard on myself when it comes to making music because I realized that although I'm doing it on my own and not in a studio, like the imperfections are like part of like the song. So and it's not like it's like like inaudible, like you can hear what I'm saying. It's just it doesn't have to be perfect. So I've tried to like lay off being too much of a perfectionist with my work, but one day I'll have the equipment and the you know, recording. I think it adds the, the human aspect, you know. It's even with, you know, the more alternative side of music, you can hear when something is extremely produced. Sometimes that serves a purpose, but it, it depends on what type of message you're trying to send or what, what you're actually trying to say or convey. And for me personally, like the, the little human aspects of it, the variations and stuff like that, that for me is listening like in depth to something and see it, finding things that, you know what, an artist would have been stoked that this was here, but no one's actually going to hear it kind of deal. I feel that, that little, like a little ad lib that really speaks to you and you're like, ooh, and you put it in there and someone notices and then you really feel like, oh, like you get me. Yeah, and this person's like, and when someone points something out like that to you, you also feel like, shit, this person's actually listening. They're listening, They're listening, listening. like it's crazy. <laughs> They're like hearing what I'm saying. And, you know, you were saying that you were at 19 and you moved over to, to New York alone. Like, I, I barely survived uh, moving to a different province alone. What was that experience like? Had you been overseas before? Had you ever been to New York prior to moving there? It was my first time in America, really, because I I did some traveling in high school. I was an, like, I was an international exchange student when I was in, like, in 2016. And I went to Italy for more a little more than a month. and. Before that, I also had like a choir tour experience where I went to Europe for some time. I fell in love with, I guess, like traveling and 
I don't really know why I'm like this, but I really like to see myself from a perspective that's like global. And like that kind of just helped me like, I don't know, it, it put that thing in my head that said like, I want to move after high school. I want to move to New York. Like I want to, no, it wasn't even specifically New York, but I wanted to move to a different society, I guess. Like, don't get me wrong. Like I could have just like, went to like you know like Cape Town or like Joburg like you know where I was also just like what am I going to go to high school 2.0 and also it's not that I was terrible but I did also feel a certain like limitation like creative limitation just like staying in the same place that I grew up in and then I was like yeah if I'm going to study let me do it in New York and I didn't really know what to expect and I just did it all I knew is that I was like I'm doing it it was just something about me that when I want something it's not impossible so I was just like yeah why not and then I ended up actually having the best time ever and that's I realized the best moment like the best thing that like comes out of just like throwing yourself into something that's like lack of a better word a high risk you know yeah, I, I would consider that that high risk. Yeah, yeah, that could have gone pretty south. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, I'm, yeah, like I'm, I'm I have anxiety just thinking about it. Um, is it? <laughs> but like, I get you. I get you. What you're saying about the limitations of your of your surroundings and stuff like that. I do feel like if you had had stayed in South Africa, it might have been something along the lines of you would have been confined to the type of music that people would have expected you to make. And it's really hard to break out of that because there's always this level of expectation mm -hmm. where people will want you to go. South Africans can be really like stubborn with that type of thing. It's just something that we, we, we tend to do. But coming back here now, it's, I like the way, I guess there's a certain uh, aspect that way I like how I did it. I like I'm started here, moved there. And then when I bring it back here, it's like I feel like an appreciation from people from home who are rooting for me because it's not like I'm reaching out to a specifically South African audience. For me, it's like just a global audience. Like I was looking at my stats and I have like listeners from Germany and I'm like, cool. And that's like kind of just like what I'm about, I think, just like like kind of connecting with everyone kind of feeling like there's someone out there in the Netherlands who gets me, you know? Yeah, I, I understand entirely. It, there's, a, there's a sense of pride and validation that comes from that that is not quite explainable or easy to put in words. When you got there, did you just gravitate towards musical people? Like you said, you, obviously, did you know your, that a friend of yours was going to be there or was it kind of just a happy accident? It was a happy accident. And she was actually, I was around a lot of acting students, actually, because she was an actor Music was more of a thing that I did with her, like on a personal, like just me and her, like when we would just hang out, we do like, you know, like fun friend freestyles and like make like stupid like raps together. And then we started making like, we were like, wait, this is kind of good. And then we were kind of like, I remember going home during after the pen, like when the pandemic hit, like I was leaving New York. And I remember one of the things she said to me was keep making music because she like, she believes in me a lot. Like, she really like we were talking we were talking a long ago and then she just started crying because she was like she really appreciates me as an artist and honestly the reason I even am like driven the way I am now is because I don't know she talked like talking about it with her and seeing the perspective of like just this art and seeing her do it too like it really inspired me to like like this is what I want to do like she really means a lot to me but yeah she was there too and that was a happy accident. No, that's sick. That's sick. And then I'm assuming like you sort of branched out from there to the other people doing music around her in New York. People in the arts are always linked to people in other arts. Especially in New York, like every like second person probably makes music there. <laughs> or, like just trying to do like <laughs> everyone. Everyone's got like flyers for their SoundCloud. Yeah, literally. I remember from the conversation that we had like in person, at you've you've never performed live like before right no i have not and well it... i've performed like at like with friends like I, one time i performed live with my friend um she had like a little event at, like at a bar and i sang a song but then that's when i kind of noticed that okay i have stage fright and it's gonna be a problem because i genuinely do and i know i could overcome it but it's just I, I haven't had the opportunity to overcome it. Like I haven't performed live enough for. <laughs> yeah, stage stage fright is a bitch. Yeah, it's I've I've done some pretty stupid things on stage. Uh, 
because of it. What I'm what I'm curious about, like from my perspective, you've done this kind of in reverse. So I've been performing live and building up a social media following based on that. For you, you already have a fairly sizable, I'm actually understating it here, but you have a sizable social media following between Instagram and TikTok. Do you feel like it's going to give you an advantage launching into it? Is it something that you think that people will follow you? Because you have something stupid like 300,000K or 300K followers on TikTok. I think it's definitely like an advantage in the sense that you have people rooting up, like rooting for you already. So it's like they started getting to know me and becoming a fan off of something that wasn't, it was art, but it wasn't music specifically. Or some of them, um, some of them do follow me for my music, but mostly it's like kind of like a social media personality. So, oh, she makes music too. Then you get like a couple people who are going to be like, okay, let me hear this out. And also like, help you out in that sense but I realized that also with the whole social media aspect in the sense in the sense that like I don't know lack of a better word but being an influencer that's something I've noticed that is very like not something you can rely on and also just the the whole like how do I put it like I just don't want it's not really what I 100% signed up for in the sense that this isn't the goal you know, so I, I like that that part of me is a part of me and that, you know, this is like I'm like a whole like collection of things. So I also just like want to kind of like develop my music like audience um, or have people hear what I want to have to say more than what I, you know, look like or, you know. Like personally, Lane, if I was if I was in your shoes with that starting into music, having a following that big, one of the things that would give would make me extremely anxious about it would be an, a level of expectation. So now there is the expectations of like 334,000 people. Like let, let's even say a third of your following are actively paying attention. That's still 100,000. What would terrify me is an expectation of what standard this is supposed to be at or, you know, where do they believe I'm at in this journey? Because if I get up on stage and this is like one of my first few times performing, I I would ha I, like I'm having a meltdown just like thinking about it in this because, you know, for me, like for me personally at this point, I have the expectation of at most and I'm, I think I'm overextending here, but like 50 to 60 people when I'm going to go mm -hmm. play a show. Like, you know, the bar is pretty low. I don't have to be <laughs> exceptionally good to be above the bar. I find that to, er to every degree, every artist who performs live music is a bit of a social whore. You tend to get mm -hmm. over your stage fright or that craving of like, uh, you know, uh, God, what's the word? Uh, I, I'm not, it's like it's on the tip of my tongue. But that craving <laughs> of, fame is the wrong word but limelight you know that i am i've lost all sort of like impact with the, <laughs> because I, I lost the words i know what you mean though like the i know what you mean when you just say the limelight like the spotlight the the cloud <laughs> no absolutely yeah like in your shoes i would be i would be terrified and like i know you've already said you got stage fright and if this was something you hadn't thought about i'm sorry if i yeah. made you think about it now <laughs> <laughs> no it's like like it's funny though isn't it funny like um I'm more comfortable with being watched on by 330 people online than if they were in front of me it's just like it's social media is really that's just something that it's hard to you have to be very um intentional with it because you don't want to be warped in the whole like thing of it because you can have all those followers but have no friends you know and then it's just like, I feel like it's, it really takes a lot of mental power to really go, you know, to just like, not allow the audience you have, have that much of an impact on you as a person. So I really do try, like when I take social media breaks, I try to take, like, I try to take breaks when I feel like my mental is like some type of way, or I'm, I really, I try, you know, but I also do have a sense of like, I don't know which like it could be bad or good but I do have a sense of like responsibility that I have to kind of like per se entertain people like or just like to make people proud or like uh, not really not to make people proud but to like I want people to be like oh she, like this girl like yeah like she's cool. 
like even on like TikTok, you I get a lot of young girls and like I get a lot of like people who recreate my makeup, people who like will say like, you know, people who are just like really involved in what you're doing. And it's like so nice. So and I know that's not something people like it's not it's not something I should take advantage of because it is a blessing. So I try to do my like my part, but I also try to separate it and look after myself at the same time. No, definitely. But like, you know, first and foremost, you know, if you're doing any kind of content creation, you are an entertainer, whether it be as mm -hmm. doing comedy skits or any anything social media related, actually, you are an entertainer. And I like how you worded that in terms of the, the responsibility, you know, being sort of very level headed about it in terms of, you know, it's not something that you want to take advantage of either. Because yeah. let, let's yeah. be honest, in that type of position, it's, it's not hard to. It's been absolutely great actually getting a chance to chat with you. And I'm I'm so stoked that we actually got to set this up. Yeah, I'm really, really glad I met you. Thank you. And yeah, thank you. This was a lot of fun. Like I actually really, I, I, I learned a lot about what it is you do. And this is, I'm so confused trying to get these words out. I'm so sorry. It's been a long day. But yeah, where can people find you? Where can people find your music? And yeah, shameless plug. Yeah, well, you guys could follow me on Instagram, Api Tenza. That's A P H I T E N Z A. And that's pronounced Api. A lot of people say Afi. I don't know if it's an American thing. <laughs> but yeah, and you can find me on Spotify, Api Tenza, TikTok too, if you're into that, and SoundCloud. Uh, yeah. It's been an absolute blast. Uh, what song do you want me to end this with? Hmm. Let's end it with your favorite. Let's end it with Guap. Sweet. <laughs>